My name is Lars aka Northgard with friends and today I will teach you how to wolf in team games like a pro. Ich bin einfach zu gut! Ich bin einfach zu gut in diesem Game! Junge, Junge! Den kümmere ich auch noch weg. Bam! Let's fucking go, Alter! Woo! After playing over 100 High Eater ranked games, I will share my experiences and thoughts about the clan with you. If you are like me and you want to take the game into your hands by controlling the flow of the game in the early and mid game, this clan is perfect for you. Wolf relies heavily on micro and decision making, so the clan can be hard to pick up. However, after figuring out how the clan works, the fun you will have while playing it will definitely be worth it. Like Lynx and Eagle, Wolf focuses on fighting and clearing the map. Wolf is not RNG dependent in a mirror matchup, as both players will play the same spawn. However, if you do not have external treasure while playing against an Eagle, you are going to have a very bad time. So avoid the Wolf Eagle matchup at all cost. If you manage to play your role perfectly, you can easily decide games on your own. Nobody can match you early in 1v1 except of course the other clear player. So if you manage to outplay him, you will outright win games even before they even started. Killing an enemy berserker like you've seen in the intro often decides the game immediately. The downside of the clan is its vulnerability. The clan is very unforgiving as it gets most of its resources by power creeping and by killing units. Coming back from a terrible fight is nearly impossible. Contrary to other clans, you will constantly have objectives to do around the map. If your military units are just standing there without doing anything, cosplaying boar, you know you are doing something wrong. With your berserker, a bodyguard and a free military unit, you constantly have to keep killing bulls and bears, giving you a huge boost of food in the early game. As one of the war clans, Wolf has the most damage output in the game. It also has the highest damage unit in the game, the Berserker, enabling the Wolf to dish out incredible damage early on. The clan's clearing speed is unparalleled. Usually, Lynx and Eagle will get to your teammates faster, so they will clear the first and the second ring faster. But once Wolf gets his chief, he will clear the rest of the map in a blink of an eye. In order to know the map and in order to know what to clear, a Wolf wants to have a team who scouts. Also, in the case of an event or a neutral attack, prepare to have your teammates back. The Chief of the Wolf, the Berserker, is a key element for the clan. The Berserker has more attack damage while having slightly lesser defense and he costs 5 iron and 200 coins, making him 50 coins more expensive than the basic War Chief. If you have external coins income like a rune or a shipwreck, it is best to delay your dock for now, as your first goal will be to get the Berserker out without delay. If you have external coins somewhere, clear that tile, colonize it and scout the treasure immediately. After building a scout, a house, a woodcutter and an egg thrower camp to clear, you must wait until you build anything else. Each building you place reduces the passive currents income in the early game, so be careful about building too much. It is absolutely mandatory to wait until you have about 185 currents before finishing your iron mine, as you will otherwise lack the currents to hire the berserker. As you now know about the start with treasure, let us talk about our basic build order without treasure. First, we build a scout camp and a house. If you discover sheep, it is useful to deep scout your site to get more information while having enough food. Then we build a dock and a woodcutter and assign all our villagers to these buildings. Wolf is one of the few clans who is fine with only having one woodcutter. If your iron is free, it is best to build your iron mine now. Otherwise you will have to clear the tile with an axe thrower. If there are two wolves on the same tile, it is fine to sacrifice one axe thrower in order to get to the iron faster. After this, we wait until we can recruit the Berserker and then we can start with our clearing. Next is building a healer hut, as we want our Berserker to stay healthy. After mining the iron, you can already build a forge, followed by a training camp and a food building, followed by a shield bearer camp. It is important to have three kinds of war camps in the beginning, so make sure to pay close attention to that, since we want to mix our army composition later on. After that, build as many training camps as you need. Now you will get a secret tip of mine. As soon as you hit Yurt's blessing, I personally like to build at least one trading post to trade away my stone, as I do not need stone to upgrade any buildings with Wolf because I aim to finish games early. This goal is pursued by our lore path as well, as we go full middle path for the lore to enhance our military strength. Firstly, we go weaponsmith into spoils of war. Now we will get coins from killing units, apart from getting food from wolves and bears. The next lore will be military strategy followed by legendary heroes and invader hitting a huge power spike as we can now decolonize zones faster while having an OP berserker. After that we go plunder. And if you want to fight in winter, fur coats. If for some reason the game hasn't ended yet, go mining efficiency into wheel threads to have the ability to rebuy your berserker for only 100 kruns and to improve your trade routes. The iron upgrade aims for the same goal. 
We do not care about economy, we just want to get stronger as fast as possible. By taking leadership as our military path, our berserker benefits from every forge upgrade, turning him into an absolute killing machine. After recruiting our berserker, we will have 10 iron left. We start with forging axe throwers to get the fastest clear speed and double attack ability. This is amazing for the berserker as well. Next we want to forge warriors as the charge ability is vital in Northgard. And later we forge shield bearers with yurts. Now that you know nearly everything about the wolf clan, let us dive into some more detailed information on how to act as a clear clan. The first thing you do when entering a game is pressing T on your keyboard. This will enable the military map and shows you little colored dots on the map. Creatures are always colored gray and military units of other players are shown in their corresponding color. This way it'll be easier for you to read the map as you can see both the military units of the neutrals and the military units of your opponents. Make sure to skip hard to clear tiles for later as we want to clear before winter as your main job will be to clear creatures near your allies. Everyone knows that bears are great for a wolf as these give you 120 food each, but do not underestimate your current income by killing draugers as well. When having axe throwers, killing melee draugers is a piece of cake as you can easily kite them with your bodyguard or your berserker. After clearing this in the first year, you will enter 801. As the wolf clan, it is your job to clear the neutrals. Northgard currently has four different neutrals you can clear. Kobolds, Murkalf, Jotun, and sometimes if you really have to, Dwarves. In order to clear the neutrals, you will have to have army. Your clan gains happiness the more warband you have. So in 8 to 1, I like to run around with at least 2 to 4 warband. If you cannot kill an enemy player with your army, kill Northgard's wildlife instead. The two easiest neutrals to clear are the Kobolds and the Murkalfs. The Kobolds and the Murkalf both give you fame and military XP and you also get Kröns for each unit you kill. If you manage to kill the Murkalf, they even give you extra food, wood and Kröns. Normally you can do that on your own, but maybe a teammate could help you with a warchief and one or two warriors. Do not kill the dwarves unless you absolutely must and clearing the Jotun is by far the hardest which you'd want to do much later. If you have to clear neutrals on your own, make sure to have at least the number of warbands shown on the slide, as the clearing will be much harder otherwise. Make sure to mix up your army composition, as you will need shield bearers to tank and warriors for the late game. Before we go to the summary, I want to give you two small PvP tips. First of all, your army is stronger than you think in late game. Do not shy away from good fights, even if you are slightly outnumbered. Second, play around your three power spikes. Forged egg throwers and warriors can be deadly in a one-on-one -on -one fight, especially so if an opponent wolf doesn't respect you. Legendary heroes unlocks your berserker's full potential and unlocking the final ability rally in your military path can actually be game-changing. When taking a fight, mind your entrance and be careful about which fights you take, as it takes only one bad fight to lose the entire game. Lastly, when you're in a team fight, try to focus the wolf units first. To sum things up, the wolf is a great clan to help your allies with the environment. You will have to practice how to get to your berserker swiftly, as this will enable a faster clear for your teammates. Make sure to kill neutrals if you can, and do not forget how strong your clan is in comparison to eco clans. Have confidence and pressure your enemies, as everybody will make mistakes when faced with a full forged army wolf in his or her face. Last but not least, do not take unnecessary risks and press T to view the military map. Remember. Playing Northgard is all about having a good time, so I can highly recommend the Wolf Clan to you. The clan can be challenging at first, but I really, really hope you will give it a try. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And make sure to check out my Twitch if you want to see this Wolf playstyle in action. And as always, thank you so much for watching and take care.